Climate change is one of our biggest challenges, but science exists to overcome challenges. So here are some of the year's top innovations in the battle against global warming. There is some amazing work taking place right around the world, but let's begin in Madagascar. Malagasy forest is under serious threats due to the fast growing deforestation, mainly caused by bushfire and charcoal production. Dr. Pascal Safid has designed a machine that creates bio briquettes, a biofuel substitute made from grass that can replace charcoal and coal. The idea is to take the grass and press them by using a press machine to get bio briquettes. Indeed, grass is renewable and regenerate faster than trees. The grass powder will be compacted by applying a high pressure with a press machine. Then we get the bio briquettes. These little grass pellets can be used to boil water and create steam energy, propel turbines for electricity, and even heat homes. Now, we already know we need to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, but what about the carbon dioxide that we've already released into the atmosphere? It's going to be up there floating around for hundreds of years. In other words, how do we regain control of our planet's thermostat? One answer to that can be found in our oceans. Australia's Professor Peter McCready is zoning in on how they draw down carbon. In particular, seagrass meadows, tidal marshes and mangrove forests and also seaweeds, they only occupy about 1% of the sea floor, yet they sequester more than half the ocean's carbon. And they lock that carbon down for thousands of years. So Peter McCready says the evidence is clear. The world should now be protecting so-called blue carbon sites. To Germany now, where Professor Frank Dimroth is trying to get more value from the sun. Now, what we believe is that solar energy will be the primary energy technology in the future. We all know that we have to go into a conversion from fossil fuels into renewable energies for establishing a more sustainable society. Creating energy from sunlight isn't a new idea, but standard solar cells can only convert light of a limited wavelength range, while other regions of the sun spectrum are hardly used, if at all. What we are trying to do is to use several materials which match much better to the different wavelength in the solar spectrum. We call these tandem solar cells or multi-junction solar cells. And the materials which we are adding to the silicon are, for example, 3,5 compounds. An example would be gallium arsenide and very new materials material where a lot of people are performing research today is the so-called perovskites. Both of these material systems have shown that we can very significantly increase conversion efficiency by combining these new materials with the conventional silicon used in today's photovoltaics. And that could improve the efficiency of solar cells even further, helping the world make the jump to renewables provided that society can ensure the current generation of lead perovskites does not introduce another kind of environmental hazard. Can you imagine a world without waste? Well, maybe not. But perhaps we can rethink how that waste is made. That was the approach taken by Andrea Ling, who recognised her own part in the problem. My response was to recognise as an architect and a designer, um, all I do is create waste or what will be waste. Um, and so if that's the case, then I need to design waste as nature does. You heard right, she designs waste intentionally. That waste incorporates natural biological decay in its fabrication process, using enzymes and microbes that are built into the materials, allowing the biomaterials and bioplastics to self-decompose under the right conditions, thereby reducing our waste output. My base material system included biocomposites of chitin, cellulose, and pectin, derived from the exoskeletons of shrimp, tree pulp waste, and fruit skins. And that's the kind of thinking the world needs right now. You can read more about these innovations and many others by heading to the website now on your screen. I suspect they'll give you as much hope as they gave me. I'm Lula Hafner. See you next time on Global Science. Remember to hit subscribe for our regular videos. And while you're here, check out our past episodes.